Welcome to Biz Talk. It is your host, Kyle Coplanis. Today in the studio, I have a really special guest. He's only been using TikTok for just over three weeks. He's been a door-to-door -door sales guy for the last 30 years, but he's bringing his ninja sales tactics and his storytelling to TikTok. He's amassed a following of over 45,000 followers in just over three weeks. That's pretty crazy. Joe, welcome to the show. Absolutely awesome. Kyle, did you say I was a door-to-door -door salesman? I had that in my information that you sent yeah, over. Yeah, I was going to say I did door-to-door -door sales for 20, 25 years. I'm teasing you. You can't be a door-to-door -door salesman. No one's going to open the doors. I started door sales. I'm 60. I started back in 86 when I was 26. I was about six years before Costco's and BJ's. Phenomenal food, cryovac, boxed like Omaha steaks. When I started building my route, filet mignon, shrimp, lobster tails, cutlets, all that kind of stuff. And you knocked on somebody's door five years before Costco and BJ's. They're like, what do you got? Show me what you got. It was yeah. awesome. But I built a big route and uh, geez, I must have sold 10,000 people over the years. And it was wonderful. And uh, how I got into TikTok, my gosh, it was just, somebody said to me a couple of months ago, it's a, you go on there and it's little jokes and stuff. And I said, no, that's not for me. Yeah. And then I, I got the app, don't ask me why. I did not know what to post. I joined, I hopped on, I think it was Wednesday, I posted Wednesday night and I was so clumsy and so afraid. My very first post was a YouTube video. It was not me, it was somebody else. I just wanted to post something. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, I didn't know what to post and I posted a quote a one sentence quote in, a, in my t-shirt. And then the next day, I didn't know what to say. I don't know what TikTok is. I don't have any followers. And I just sat in my backyard and doing a, a little rant. And I gave salesmen one sentence. I said, guys, here's one sentence. It'll help you close more deals. When I went to bed three hours later, there was 90,000, 90,000 views three hours later. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't even care. It didn't me, fathom you at me. all. You just looked at the number and were like, hey. I don't know what this means. So <laughs> I wake, I go to bed at nine o'clock. I wake up at four in the morning. That's when I wake up. And there was about 400,000 views. Wow. And I said to my wife, I go, what would you think if I said a quarter of a million? And Kyle, I tell you, she didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And I said, no, I'm only <laughs> kidding. It was 400,000. It wasn't a quarter of a million. Oh my gosh. Was she like shocked? She didn't even know what I was talking about, Kyle. <laughs> what is TikTok? What is a video? You know, what you're saying is illogical. So the punchline is, I think I hit a million views the Sunday after, which is 36 hours. So I posted on Friday and, and, and went to bed with 90,000, woke up with 300,000 had 800,000 Saturday night, and then woke up Sunday with a million. Yeah, and your third video that's posted on your account has just, it's almost at 2 million just alone on just that one video. The story gets even better. The second video I made as a goof, not knowing what to do in the t-shirt, reciting a poem, two days later, that had 5,000 views. Today, it has 120,000 views three weeks later. Yeah. That just shows you as well that TikTok can kick out your videos later. And you'd be surprised. Some of those videos might actually generate again, even a month from now. Yes. And all of a sudden, you might start seeing it on your For You page. You're like, what the heck's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> yeah. 10 days after I had the million video, 10 days later, I said, you know what? I've always had a secret system how to get out of police tickets. And I shared it with my family and I'm not going to go into it now. It's on my page. So I did a one minute. Here's how to get out of cop tickets. You just got to be humble and put your arm out the window to make sure that nobody thinks you have a gun. It had 50,000, 80,000. The bottom line is mm -hmm. I posted it on a Monday night when you're not supposed to, I repeat, not supposed to post Monday night. Right. And I woke up the next morning with, 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 with 300, 400,000 views. 
So would you say that people who say don't post on Monday nights are just foolish? I'm living proof. Exactly. Living exactly. proof. I think that people that say these days or times are the best thing is just, it's just a crock. Everyone should just post whenever they feel like they want to. That's how yes. it should be. Yes. When, when you feel comfortable, <laughs> just do it. Something I noticed, and I, I give myself permission to be wrong in all of our friends listening. God knows you have more experience than me. But, and this is just me, I don't get to 500 views unless I have 10% likes. Is that common, Kyle? Interesting. There needs to be a good ratio between likes, comments, and shares. So if there's a good ratio there, it'll get pushed out even better. If um, you watch my videos, anybody listening, our friends listening, it takes me 30 to 45 seconds to get to my punchline. Yeah. So I'm drawing people in and not even purposely. So the average watch time, if I go to my analytics, is between 42 and 46 seconds. Which is crazy because typically the average watch time overall on the entire app is around 12 to 15 seconds. So really? Yeah. So you're killing it with that. If you watch my videos, I don't know, I'm older, I'm 60 years old, and I got something to say. And what I do, if, if anybody watches my videos, is I give the punchline in the first three seconds. I also put a written text headline as if you're reading a newspaper. So when a person sees me on the For You page, they know the whole story literally within two seconds. So yeah. they're reading the headline. And I noticed that nobody, not very many people use headlines and stuff. I don't have any reference of what to do or not to do. And uh, I used to make postcards and marketing from a meat and seafood. and It always had a headline. So all of my videos have a headline giving a promise. You yeah. might call it a USP, a, a unique selling proposition of what it is. And then the first two seconds, I give the punchline. Yeah. Exactly, Joe. And you hit a good point. There's so many people not using that, that feature of just being able to explain what it is really quickly. So somebody can see it's just like a piece of advertising, just because it's a video doesn't mean it's not a piece of marketing material. Yes. So you yes. need somebody to understand right away so they can draw them in. So they want to watch it. Cause if not, they just see your face. That's not going to necessarily draw them in right away. They, they have to mentally see what it is and want to then listen. I'm not a comedian. I'm not lip syncing. I'm not pretty. So what the heck am I going to do? I've got to do something. Here's this old guy. I got to do something to, I'm trying to buy two seconds. So I have a verbal headline and I have a written headline. I will say this for your listeners. I do something on purpose and my headlines to my videos, I use mm -hmm. cognitive dissonance, which everybody knows is when, and I'm not going to explain it, but when you look at something and you go, huh? When what you're seeing doesn't match your belief, that renders you, that stops you. So I'll give you an example. On the million dollar video, my headline was cognitive dissonance. It made no sense. The headline was of the video, not everybody that buys from you has to say yes. The headline, I'm gonna repeat that. Not everybody that buys from you has to say yes. So that's an absurd comment. So if you're a salesman, I'm going to give you 15 seconds. I might even give you 30 seconds to explain what the heck is going on because that's an absurd comment. So by the 40th second, by the 45th second, I actually delivered on that promise. And that's the video because I remember watching it too. That's the one that you said hit the, the 2 million. It won, it's at 1.9 after three weeks but it did 1 million views in 36 hours. Yeah, which is crazy. But, but let's just be fair and honest. With a million views, I think it only got me 15, 20,000 followers. Followers. Yeah. As I entered the platform. That's another thing that's changed significantly in the beginning of TikTok when it first started. A viral video like that generated a ton of followers. My daughter... When she got maybe three, three viral videos, she ended up generating about 250K followers just from three videos. What? 
Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Did you just suggest that your daughter got over 200,000 followers from one video? Yeah, she pretty much did. She ended up, she jumped from zero to 600,000 within three months. She's at 2 million now, but that was a little bit earlier that the, it feels like the app has changed wow. significantly. The new people jumping on, it doesn't seem they're following as many people anymore. They just stick to the for you page, like, and scroll on. So those that are coming though, really wanted to learn more about you. Those followers now, maybe it trickles a little bit slower than before, but you're, right. those followers you're going to have are going to be way more powerful than just a bunch of empty people just following. Okay. So even if it grows slower, it's better because the people that chose to follow you wanted to follow you, not yes. just because it's yes. some, yep. right? Yep. So you got to look I'll, at it like that. I have an interesting comment for you. So if I'm on TikTok as this old time salesman and I'm teaching good, solid, the psychology of selling, and a million people viewed it, and there's 140,000 likes, I think the comments are like 30,000. Guess what? Of those 30,000, 10,000 are people who hate salesmen, I repeat, who hate salesmen, <laughs> yep. and who are yelling at me, calling me an evil, dangerous, when I did the and this is about making videos if you have the chance and you have the gumption that are, I don't want to use the word, I guess, controversial. Hmm. And as Kyle always says, if it is controversial, all of those comments, the algorithm loves. It adds to your <laughs> it, comments. It and does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Controversial content does so well. There's many people on the app that strictly do that as their content because it's helping them grow. People want to be involved and have their opinion and say so many things and stuff. <laughs> so I always say, if your video goes on the For You page and starts doing well, get yes. ready to see hate comments and yes. be prepared because it's, it's going to happen regardless. Even if you say something perfect or... Yes. It could be the most positive information. There's going to be Debbie Downers out there that are just going to give their two cents and stuff. Just be prepared for it. But to be fair, look at it as something great. Like even famous celebrities say, hey, my haters are really also the ones that contribute to my yes. growth. Oh because my God. any news is good news in media and social media and growth. So some people take it and take it personally, but look at it as, hey, this is great. Yep. I'm starting something up. I'm being a disruptor yes. in this space. There you go. I did that uh, police video giving my idea on getting out of police tickets. If there was a half million views, which there was, is, if there is, I'm going to guess, I forget how many, I'm going to say 30 or 40,000 comments. I'm going to say 1,000 cops said I am correct. The technique that Joe described is true. I probably had 50 cops that said it what I said is silly. And I must have had 2,000 African Americans say, literally say, this is white privilege. This doesn't work for black people. Mm -hmm. And all I did was make a humble video about being humble in front of the cops. Yeah. But, but I say that to say this, and I, and I have no judgment. You got to trust me. I have no judgment. But I just said what I said to say this, that unbeknownst to me, it struck a huge conversation, a volatile conversation. So I'm not convinced that there was a half a million people saying, oh, wow, look at that. I'm convinced that there was, I don't know, 300,000 people in shock saying, what the heck did this jerk just post? So it was like this big controversy. But it gets people talking. And, there you go. And that's the key, too. The, a lot of people are thinking they just want all these great followers and all these positive comments and stuff. But in order to make change in anything or to get somebody's attention, you have to be disruptive. You have to create these conversations that might be a little bit interesting or might be controversial or things like that. Yes. The greatest leaders out there have to be yes. disrupting the world. Yeah. And if you're not wanting to be that, then... Good luck because you're, you're, yes. you won't make it. If that's your goal, it's to make it a big in social media and make a name for yourself. You won't make it if you're scared of people coming back at you with comments yep. of, of their opinions. And I don't want to be labeled as the guy 
that got a million views his third day. A, that's not a big deal. People have done 10 times more. G getting uh, 40,000, 45,000, almost 50,000 in three weeks, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. But out of your own words, Kyle, your, your daughter did a quarter of a man in, in, in one post. So I say that to say this. I'd like to be one of the guys that is, and the headline says, senior citizen joins TikTok in his first month, gets 50,000 subscribers. And, and I mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people over the age of 50, a lot of women and guys mm -hmm. who sincerely, I see a lot of them who sincerely want to post and who want to communicate and who have a good sense of humor, but they don't want to dance and they don't want to lip sync. And forgive me, a lot of them qu quite don't know what to say or have thought about what they're going to do. 100%. So I'm saying, I'm saying to anybody over the age of 50, go to my page and look at the old guy with just a couple of ideas, staring into the camera, speaking sincerely, trying to up inspire people in a pandemic. Absolutely. And we all have a story to tell. That's what I always yes. try to tell people too. We've lived our unique life. Nobody's lived a life like us. Even if it's similar to somebody else, we've still had different experiences. Correct. And the thing is we relate to some people and somebody's going to relate to whoever's listening right now and you want to jump on there. Somebody's going to relate to you. That's right. And there's going to be lots of people and you just have to share your story. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with thinking that the app is with all these, like it's just dancing or it's just lip syncing. And it's, it's more right. than that. You're living proof of that. You're a proof that people actually want to hear that type of content and see it. And you're making, you know, waves. So you're right. People who are over 50, you do have a place on the app. Joe, you're proof of that. I'm living proof. I said it four minutes ago, and I'm talking to anybody now over 50, man or woman, go on my page, spend a darn 30 minutes, and just look at it and try to learn from it. There's something to be learned from a gray-haired guy, me, in a t-shirt, his second video, reading a poem that has 5,000 views after three days, and after a month, it has 140,000 views. There's, some, there's something to be said for that. Exactly. You know what I love too is you looking at your channel to be like, and I'm not being rude or anything like this, but it's very, it's, there's nothing crazy to it, right? You're just showing up as you are. It's very relatable. Anybody can do what you did. <laughs> You're not in the studio. You don't have all this high quality technology. Well, You're well, not. Come you know, on, you... Kyle. Let's keep it real, Kyle. <laughs> come on. Say what you really want to say. <laughs> there is no editing. There is no lights. Yeah. This morning I did one in my dark garage. Let's keep it real. <laughs> There's no jump cuts and it's silliness. It's just an old guy ranting on a camera, but the appeal is, and this is, and I'm going to say this slowly because I want my friends that are 50 and above to hear me. If I have any appeal at all, I'm not hundred percent convinced it's exactly what I say on the videos, but it's my conviction. It's my conviction, and it goes back to what Kyle said four minutes ago, that, that Joe just seems like he's just an average guy being honest. Exactly. And you said out of your own mouth, Kyle, six minutes ago, which I appreciated, that th there isn't a lot of that on TikTok. I haven't seen a lot of senior citizens, i.e., say, 55 and above. That I haven't seen. Exactly. I've seen a lot of really genuine male, female, say 35 to 45, just talking right to the camera. A lot of viewers, a lot of followers, totally genuine with good word. But I do not see that age 55, 60 and above. I do not. Yep. And the space is so fresh and, and people, but you're proof that people want to hear it. Like... You're not alone. You're not just out there talking to yes. two of your friends. Yes. The younger demographics want to learn from the people that are older and they want to hear their stories. They love it. Even growing up, I love talking to people and I was a respiratory therapist for years. So I worked in the hospital and one of my favorite things was actually talking to seniors who lived the life and just asking them questions and 
So people want to embrace it. Like you said, we all have stories and we want to learn. That's how we learn in society is learning from the people who were before us. What can we take from them? What have they taught us? And, yeah. Or change the things. If they're like, hey, this didn't work. You need to change this. So your path is different. And the only way to do so is talking to people who are older than us and learning yes. from them. And so there is a space for people like you and your proof. I mean, if that's not proof enough, people really need to take a look. You said you don't know why you downloaded it. Is there, did you just see it again or something on your phone or come up on an ad and you're like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. No, it was brought up by a couple of people and somebody had texted me. I didn't have the app and somebody texted me a funny thing. And I said, Hey, wait a minute. I saw that somebody had mentioned it months ago. So I got the app, hopped on it. I truly forget what intrigued me. I used yeah. to be a sales trainer. Teaching sales and teaching motivation is not new for me. Let's not pretend that it is. I don't want anybody to think that out of left field, I, I started teaching this. Right. So I have some experience. But I want to go back, Kyle to what you just said a couple of minutes ago. You, you were talking about that the young kids have, have an affinity towards possibly the older people doing this. Anybody that goes on my sales videos, if I have 15 videos, probably seven are sales. Right. And I'm teaching. Hundreds and hundreds of young guys with respect saying, Grandpa, you're killing it. Grandpa, you're my new <laughs> hero. Right. I never heard that before. You're my new ninja teacher. Young guys. Right. 20, 30 years old. So when you say, Kyle, that the older generation have a very bountiful future here, if they have solid information, and that the younger people are drawn to it, feeding from it, and earning from it, I said earning 100%. Yeah. And you know why I think that your tactics and your messages work so well is because over the years, we've lost that human connection. Whereas you back starting in the eighties was all about that. You had to make that connection with human beings. And now it's so digital and we forgot that. But the thing is society wants to go back to that humanizing thing because digital stuff is so, is so powerful. Now we need to fill that connection. That's why TikTok's killing it because you're looking at somebody eye to eye, not just watching something on TV or- And reading. you can see right through them. 100%. If they're exactly. not authentic or, or if they're not really feeding me, I'm done. Exactly. And, and we finally get that versus just like the seminars or whatever you watch, like a video on somebody who's teaching sales and it's so over high polished. You, you can't really get that feel, but people are wanting to learn yeah. from somebody who's yep. authentic and- Yep. You're bringing that and these sales guys are like, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want because that's real life. You know, that's There's a guy, I think his name is Ed Halloran. And I repeat, Ed Halloran, he's 80 years old and he giggles and sits in his car and he talks to us like he's talking to seven-year-olds. <laughs> he's having the time of his life and he says the secret of happiness is to be happy. And that's nonsensical and... But he has close to 100,000 viewers. Mm -hmm. A, he's cute. B, he's genuine. I'm going to repeat. C, he's cute. He's 80. <laughs> Maybe my grandparents are dead. He's my new grandparent. Right. People love him. Love him. Because he believes what he's doing, what he's saying, mm -hmm. and he's having a blast. Yeah. No editing. Yep. Nothing fancy. 80 years old sitting in a car saying giggling and saying the secret of coffee is to drink every last sip but he believes what he's saying and yeah. laugh with him right and you're watching this and you're 20 years old 30 years old and you think it's hysterical exactly and if you're 50 years old six years old looking at it you're just saying what a sweetheart yeah so he he has space and it's it's wonderful absolutely and you know what i think the key too, is some people who come to the social media, they love seeing all these numbers and I want that for myself. I want that for myself. But if you, if that's what you really want, then you're not going to be really authentic. You, you're going to try to change your messaging to, to try to garner these things. But ultimately all you have to do is be you show up and leave the views out. Just give your message and who cares? That's where I've noticed the people that do the best is because like you, how you do your videos and just showing up just like Ed and yourself and just being 
real and honest and authentic, that's where it drives that connection. You could have changed your wording to where it's scripted, perfect right. and, and everything like that. It, it doesn't really work. If that was working, then we all could be perfect at this game of TikTok. But the real truth of it is to be yourself. Just show up. Who cares if the video is not perfect? I had Janet who, I don't know if you've connected with her, Janet Van Wick. She's 65. She's using TikTok. She was on my podcast a couple podcasts ago. And she said, Kyle, the the reason why my videos are doing well is because I don't, if I mess up in it, I just post it. And a lot of people are saying, Janet, this is so relatable because I sometimes mess up. And she's like, so what? Just post it. That's human. Yes. And that's what's driving people to, to love her because they're like, I love that you're just posting it as it is. I saw a video today and I want to second what you just said. It was a guy, I don't know, 32 years old from the Midwest. He climbed into his big fat $100,000 farm tractor and it was enclosed. And his little dog was on the floor of the truck waiting for him to start his day wagging his tail. And the guy said nicely, TikTok, here I am. Meaning, this is one of my first videos, meaning I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, but I'm going to work. I work in a farm. Here's my tractor and my dog comes with me. I think it had 40,000 views and I watched it and it touched my heart. Why? It was authentic. Why? There was a little puppy. There was a little bit of music. It was just a guy going to work in his farm truck. So it goes back to what you said, Kyle, a half an hour ago about anybody who's confused about what do I post? How do I do it? Number one, do you dare be genuine? And number two, do you dare, and I underscore the word dare, do you dare reveal what you do best in an authentic way to the world? And then and there you go. Exactly. No, for sure. That's it. Like, that's really ultimately it. It, it comes all down to. There's a lot of people on the app who give tips and tricks and hacks and things like that. To be honest, when I started my BizTalk account, so I have another account, I have 26,000 followers on my other account, but on the, my BizTalk account, I was going to maybe use it for teaching tips and hacks of the app. But I started thinking to myself, I don't really want to be that guy because if we all knew this secret, we'd all have millions of followers. But there's, to be fair, there's no secret. It's all within yourself. You have all the secrets right here in your own mm -hmm. body, your own stories. That's it. Your story yourself. That's it. That's the secret sauce to anything at the end of the day. And so like post times, like you said, oh, Monday night is not the right, po but you did it and it worked. So that's why I say those things are let BS. Me, like, yeah. Let me say anybody that lives in the East Coast, Eastern time, I went mega viral Friday at 6 p.m., mega viral Sunday at 8.30, if you can believe that, Sunday at 8.30 at night. I've never, ever done well in three weeks. What do I know? It's been three weeks. Posting in the morning or the afternoon. Lord knows I've tested it. And I've done very well on a Thursday night posting between 7, 7 and 8 o'clock. Yeah. To me, very well is waking up with 10, 15,000 views. Oh, for sure. That's yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I posted a video. I think it was even at like midnight or something. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to post it. Why not? And just see. And that video still did really well for me. So I feel like there's really no key answer. There's people that will give you all these things and saying, I know how it works, but yes, look at their videos. It's why aren't your videos always viral then? If you know yes. every secret, <laughs> you know, that's what I like to ask them. How come you have a couple of videos that are only 2000 views? What's your excuse there? If you know all the, all the yes. tricks. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. And so many people are caught up on these vanity metrics. They want these things. So they're like so drawn to learning all the secrets, but they're missing the point. You just missed out on weeks of not posting where all these stories you could have been telling because you're looking for the ultimate goal, like the ultimate secret sauce before you post and just be, yes, just get on there and just show your face and try it out. And I always tell people too, in the beginning, don't be scared to just post random things. If you don't know a niche, that's okay. You're not going to figure that you're, it's going to change anyway, as you evolve and people come to you and, and you figure out what videos do well or what you enjoy talking about. 
But in the beginning, don't get too caught up on that. Just post a bunch of different things and test it out and see what works well. I want to give a metric. If that's the right word, I want to give a metric. And I'm speaking to anybody that's watching this or listening that's new. Listen careful. This is very interesting. I'm hoping that's going to help you. And you've heard Kyle say this more than twice on his various videos. I know I've heard him say it two or three times. I'll give you the punchline and then I'm going to explain. Uh, the punchline that I want to make is your video, anybody's video that got 2,000, 5,000 views will be used by TikTok for the next month or two. I don't know why they keep going back and using it. Correct, Kyle? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So my punchline, my point is I must have five videos that stayed at three to 5,000 views for two, three, four days. Now, three weeks later, are at 50,000 to 120,000 views because TikTok will not stop using it. Yeah. How do I know that? Because I'm watching my analytics on my phone and that follower come, came from this video. That follower came, they like that video. Yeah. I can see on my darn phone that it's, it's Wednesday night at 8 o'clock and TikTok is using one of my original videos from three weeks ago <laughs> and it didn't even go viral it just launched with 2,000 3,000 4,000 views but let's not forget all of my videos are 60 seconds so yep. Kyle isn't it true that the algorithm loves the fact that people are staying on my videos 30 seconds 40 seconds yeah, the TikTok watch time is the most critical aspect to a video. So if you have a video, let's just use 20 seconds, for example. If you make a 20-second video, the algorithm is going to look and see, okay, how long is somebody watching it? So if you're statistically somebody's watching it for even 15 to the full 20 seconds, it's going to get pushed because the algorithm sees that video saying this is something exciting. People want to hear it, so we might as well share it then. Right. And then it's going to look at other aspects too. Are people actually commenting on it? Because is it drawing engagement? That's a right. key factor too. So that's the second step. And then are people actually sharing it? Is it worthwhile? Somebody needs to say, hey, you got to hear this too, to a friend. So those are the things. But watch time is the number one thing. Now, if you have a 60 second video, it's a lot harder, I think, to go viral. But your stories are working so well that they are with that amount of time. That means you're just killing it. I think if you had a couple of videos that were shorter, I think they'd still do great, but it's really difficult. I know a lot of people with 60 seconds have a hard time. My videos, because I'm trying to cram so much information are around 60 right. seconds as well. I'm not as successful as you with my watch time. I'd say on average, it's about 22 seconds, which to me, I thought, man, that's great. Since the average watch time of the entire app is 12 to 15 seconds. I was like, Hey, mm -hmm. you're doing something right in that regard. Yes. So I w I'm pretty happy with that, but yeah, it is true. I, I it's 80%. So typically they say 80% of your uh, watch time. So if it's 60 seconds, as long as you hit that kind of 80% watch time mark, then the video will. Kind I'm of not hitting. Out. If you just hit 80%, I'm not hitting 50 seconds. I'm hitting 35 to 45 seconds. That's as far percentage. as average, average. Yeah. Maybe it's, and they say, I think 80% is if it's like really going to get kicked out. So your, your views might actually go even sky high if it hits 80%, but maybe the, the factor is if it hits over at least 50% and there's so many things, I don't know all the, the answers, right? I don't yep. know everything. These are just what I'm, I'm hearing or testing and seeing. There mm -hmm. could be so many different factors, but I know that if your watch time is close to the final the total amount that is key. And the, the another key thing is if people rewatch, that's a huge too. So mm -hmm. that's your goal. So have them rewatch it. Beautiful. But, yeah. But I you know what? You're doing great. Thank you, brother. It, it'd be good. Like you could even write down some of these things for yourself and, and see, because that would be a better statement than anybody else on the internet. You know, you have your own study right there. You can write down and see, be like, this video was 60 seconds on average. Oh, I have that. Those analytics. Exactly. I'm trying to figure out how the heck this works and why it works and often why it does not work. Exactly. So I'm keeping extremely anal records of a lot. This intrigues the heck out of me. It intrigues the heck out of me. Because you know what? There is at the end of the day, like even in maybe 
people still have some good secrets. I have to say there's some good tips out there that I think if you do, it would do well. Just like you gave a good one today saying you have a headline on your video. That is a key thing. And people could be doing that today. And I really do think that is true. That is a great tip that people should be using. So if, if you are not this young, beautiful, I don't care if you're male or female, yeah. if that's not, if that's not you and you aren't purposely lip syncing, yep. you no, know, but you have some great content, my headline trick works. Yeah. And, and like you said, if you're pretty or, or you're really good looking, that is your headline, like your that, face. Exactly. So exactly. if you're missing that element. You right. know, and unfortunately, there's a lot of us that are, so we have to draw them in a different way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Never put your headlines at the bottom. Don't ask me why. Top left. That's how people read their newspaper. Top left. Love that, Joe. I didn't even think of that. That's great. See? Yep. And this is exactly why the younger generations want to hear these things. We we don't think of that. Tell me the last time I read a newspaper. I have no idea. <laughs> but, but like. Yeah. I cannot wait. It. Hold on. <laughs> this is hysterical. What I just said. It's 2020, and with a straight face, I was teaching people how to read a newspaper a minute ago. And then Kyle <laughs> goes, "Oh, wait a minute, old man. We don't read newspapers." <laughs> but that's still relatable because when I read something, it's true. Anything that's on my screen or even in front of me, I start at the top left. So. Yes. I love, that's a huge thing. Like you just reminded me. And the thing is I've been putting all my, my little kind of headline things on the bottom. So I'm going to try your strategy and putting it in the top left. You have to test it and be very careful when you go to the top. And I'm very careful. You can't go too tall, but I cover my face because my face has no value. And I say that seriously, yeah. my message has the value. Right. So if you watch my videos, my text will inch into my face because I want the headline to be very prominent. But right. I, I, I don't care that it's encroaching on my face because I'm I not the that. issue. I'm not the issue. That. Yeah, the message is the issue. Yeah, I love that. You're, the message is your piece, not your face. Exactly. Yes. You're not trying to show yes. up to be yes. this model. <laughs> yes. And I want to say this before we leave. I want to say this. Mm -hmm. and, I, and this is just me. I hope everybody agrees going forward that if you give a video 10, 15 seconds, that you understand that you owe the creator a, a comment. And people may argue with that, mm -hmm. but there's a reason that you, I'm, and I'm speaking to your audience, and I don't mean if, it's a, if, if you're watching because it's cringeworthy, but I watch a lot of videos on TikTok that I'm not going to follow. Yep. But I appreciate the, the video for about seven different reasons. Right. I will always heart, and I won't know what to say in the comment, but I'll put amen, or I'll put there you go. Because I know it helps the algorithm, and I want to walk away helping and adding to the person that just entertained me for 15 seconds. I love that, Joe. That's such a great piece. I might even post a video about that later because... That is so, it's just a great reminder. And even though it might've took somebody only 30 seconds to create, that's still some value in their life that they knew about that they shared with the yeah. world for free. Yeah. And all we can, how easy is it to just give back and thanking them for that yeah. piece of information by just simply giving it a like or saying something. I mean, I, hey. And you want to know where that comes from? You want to know where that comes from? I'm like every other person that posts a video who puts their heart into it, who puts their heart into it. And it may only get a couple hundred views. I don't care. Yeah. But if you spent 10 or 15 seconds, I'm not begging that you follow me. But we all know, and this isn't news, that it helps the, alg the algorithm like and comment. So mm -hmm. why are you walking away from my video, which people do, Yeah. with no heart and no comment? You just used me for 15 seconds. So th that's how my brain works, Kyle. Yeah, I hear you. That's true. And I'm really good about like, in fact, sometimes when I don't like something, I, I'm bummed. I'm like, how did I not like that? Because I go back, <laughs> I watch, I go through my likes at the end of the day sometimes just to go yes. find a video that I really enjoyed to watch it one more time or share it with my wife or, or my kids in the house. How do you go like, back? Oh, you, there's a, on your TikTok account, if you go to your page. Yep. On your own self, there in the middle yep. there, there's like a little heart and it almost, oh, looks, if you I hit that, it. you can see everything you've liked. 
I got it. Yeah. So then you can find things it. faster or things it. like that. But yeah, I do that I sometimes it. and to go find a video that I really enjoyed to share. Let me ask you a question because you're a professor of TikTok, but I have a random question. Give me a yes or no. Okay. If you're playing around and watching a video for 10, 15 seconds, could you accidentally hit the heart button? Oh yeah, absolutely. And how is that? And how is that done? I mean, if you tap on it, like so sometimes our phones are a little bit, especially newer phones. Do you have a new phone by any chance? Yes, I do. Yeah. So the newer ones are really sensitive with tap and touch. I've accidentally liked things before. I just went on there right now. That was music, but I've accidentally liked things before. Or sometimes cognitively, this happens as well. If you're going through the For You page, let's say, and you're liking a bunch of things, some people do that too. They'll accident they'll just keep liking things like naturally it's like designing right. us to like double tap to like things now so here's why i bring that up yeah because i'll see a cringe worthy video don't ask me what or when <laughs> and i will tap on the x which i think is the join because my mind my mind my mind needs this question answered and the question is does this fool have any following so I click the I click the plus button and they've got eighty thousand, a hundred thousand followers. I'm not going to follow them. I'll unfollow them in ten minutes. Yeah. But I think that movement made me heart people that I didn't want to heart. Or <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Right. Yeah. The, there's so many people on there that do a lot of cringy content. And the funny thing is, though, I've had I've had conversations with some of these people, and in real life, they're way different than that. They just know that's been working for them, so. They continue on with it. Cal, I'm going to jump in with what you just said. I've heard on your videos, and I, I think you're saying it now. Am I allowed to do sales training and wisdom? Oh, 100%, Joe. And why does that work? Because it is working, yeah. but I thought there was a law that said a brand is a brand is a brand is a brand and don't deviate. No, even G Gary Vee is such a strong uh, influencer out there talking to people about social media. He says, 80-20 rule, always. 80% 80, 80 of things you're good at, your specific niche, let's say that sales, 20% always evaluating different ideas and bringing new value because people want to hear that other aspect of it. I, I think if people narrow their niche down too much, that's what could kill them. Always be exploring different things. Oh, that's profound, brother. Huh. That is profound. If anybody listening to this goes to my page, confirmation of what brother Kyle just said, <laughs> I did a video only, I don't know, 10 days ago. It's got 100,000, 140,000 views. And all I did was recommend a darn book. That's it. But it was a book that I was sold on and a book that I've been reading for 30 years. And that I was more than passionate about it. So I guess it goes back to Kyle's formula, whereas quote unquote sales psychology is what I'm about. The people like to learn the other aspects of that personality. Yeah, hundred hundred percent, Joe. I think that people do want to see that. They wanna they wanna see that side of you as well. And that will help them relate more and learn more about you as a person to then trust your value that you're bringing on the sales side even further. That's deep. That's yeah. deep. You just said, I hope the people listening to this rewind that because that was deep. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Does this have to be a free podcast? I could darn near charge $3,000 darn dollars. I can't control myself. Tell me again that this past hour, people are going to hear and it's free. Tell me it's free. It's free. I know. 100%. It's free. How can this be free? What you have heard in the past hour, why is that free? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, there you go. I, I appreciate your time, but I'd love to just end this and quickly on how could people find you and give us a little snippet of how they can find that chapter of your book. Two things, two things. Yeah. My page is Joe Schroeder Wisdom. So if you go to and you type it like Peanuts Charlie Brown, S-C-H-R-O-E. So you type it the way you do Charlie Brown Schroeder. And Charlie Brown was one of the characters in the cartoon. So my handle on uh, TikTok is Joe Schroeder Wisdom. Perfect. If you go on Amazon and you want a free chapter of my book and you have Kindle, you type in the search bar at Amazon, 
Joe Schroeder book, Disciplines of Doership. Okay. Disciplines of Doership. And doership is D-O-E-R. Like you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Yep. So it's it's Joe Schroeder book, Disciplines of Doership. Perfect. And you'll get at least 20 pages for free on your Kindle. And there awesome. you go. That's awesome. And anybody who's listening, I'm going to make it even more simple for you. You can go to the description of this podcast, wherever you are in the description of YouTube, if you're watching this, and you'll have all the links right there for you. So you don't have to go search, click the link, go check that out. Yeah. Joe, I really appreciate your time. I, I agree. This podcast had tons of value. And those listening, you're welcome. It is free. I'm not happy this is free, my friend. <laughs> I got to uh, talk to you behind closed doors. We got to somehow charge 3000 There we go. We'll make a, we'll make a course. We'll, we'll I'm going to knock on your door or you're going to knock on mine, but we have to do this again. I'm down, Joe. I think that's a great idea.